Hello there, friends and neighbors. This is me, Stella Hendricks. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Uh, today we are gonna do another sort of vintage <laughs> Playboy review. It's gonna be another Girls Next Door era Playboy. Another one with the cover of our three favorite girls in the world, Holly, Bridget, and Kendra. And I absolutely love this picture of Bridget. I think it's one of my favorites of her. I have a hundred favorite things of every favorite thing I have, especially when it comes to Bridget. But I think it's especially like her hair or something in this. It's so cute. Oh my gosh, I love her. She does not get enough credit for what a natural beauty she is. And she doesn't have like work done either. Not that there's anything wrong with work getting done. I have worked on myself. But it's just sort of a thing to go home. That's like extra special. <laughs> In this particular episode, we also have Coco, uh, Ice T's wife, who I totally love. I always knew I had a different type of body, says Coco. I was always stockier than the average girl. Her favorite hip hop husband, Ice T, approves. She's got a big booty, and I think it's beautiful, he says. <laughs> Though Mr. and Mrs. T have been together for nearly eight years, and though they aren't exactly Aussie and Harriet, they are a little Aussie and Sharon Osbourne. I'm his assistant, Coco says. I get up with him in the morning to go to the set of Law & Order SVU. When Coco steps in front of the camera, Ice T becomes her assistant. He even pitched this spread to us and helped out during the shoot for Ice T's hot Coco. He oiled her body. How many more nude shoots will follow this wife? Will he follow his wife too? This may be the last time we see so much of her. As Ice-T explains, when you do Playboy, that's it. You've hit the top of the game. Don't fear everyone. To this day, uh, Coco is still blessing our lives with pictures of her <laughs> anatomy, shall we say. I love her. Oh yeah, okay, so there's a whole another article in here about Coco that we're gonna read. But also, because I got in the mail today, uh, the uh, down the rabbit hole, I had read this before, or rather, I had listened to it on audiobook. Um, I'm always working, I'm always uh, sewing, and I always have a million projects, and it's hard for me to sit and really read um, hard copies of books, and I love audiobooks. But with this one, everyone talks about it so much, it's practically... If you want to talk about uh, the Playboy world today, you kind of have to know uh, Holly Madison's down the rabbit hole. So I thought I'd get a copy and I thought it was a paperback, but it's a hard cover copy. So nice. Oh, so we're going to review this one at some point. But I remembered in here that she talked a little bit about meeting Coco. So let's see what she said. Uh, one afternoon, when I was freshening up in the bathhouse and talking with a girlfriend, a buxom woman named Nicole bounded in and introduced herself. She was very sweet, but I could hardly stop, stop gaping long enough to get a word out. This woman had the largest breasts I'd ever seen. Um, the masseuse had to go rustle up an extra stack of towels just so Nicole could lie on her stomach for the treatment. Years later, when I was flipping through an issue of Playboy and recognized the busty blonde from the bathhouse, only this time her name was Coco and she was married to the rapper Ice-T. It's been her booty that has earned her the most attention, but strangely enough I didn't notice her butt as, unex as unusually large back then, probably because I couldn't take my eyes off of those boobs. <laughs> so uh, I paraphrase that. Um, sometimes I think if, if uh, things aren't very tactful or whatever, you know, just sort of skip over little parts. But yeah, that was so funny. I wonder if she's referring to this magazine. Uh, I don't know if there's been other features of Coco. I will have to go through and look and find out. Oh, the bunny, the hidden bunny on the cover. Can you find it? Do you know where it is? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> It's actually hidden in the girl's curls. The girl's curls. The goyle's coils, like right there. Between Holly and Bridget. Very cute. Love that, okay. The world of Playboy.
Let's see. Oh, I like this picture of uh, Hef and his boys, Marston, and I like to call him Cooper Hef. I'm sad that um, the, the Hefner family ended up kind of parting ways with Playboy. I understand why that would have happened. But I would love the idea of like Cooper taking up his father's kind of role and being the Cooper Hef. And not that he had to live his life the way that Hef lived it, but just being kind of like the, you know, the almost the mascot or something. <laughs> I thought that would have been cool, but I guess that wasn't to be. And I know that the modern Playboy uh, is very uh, strongly, there's a large majority of women who work in Playboy, which I think is great. Uh, because it is such a female sexuality driven publication and it always strike me, strike me? It always struck me as kind of weird how um, the owners of strip clubs and the owners of girly magazines and stuff always men, not always men, usually men, frequently men and it just seemed kind of weird to me because the world was a world of women so why is it headed by a man? Not necessarily bad, but I'm really glad to see today more girls in charge of these types of things. Also, we just point out down here, Dita Devontis, burlesque dancer extraordinaire, Kim Kardashian back in the day. I love Kim K. I know she gets hate, but I love her. Oh, this is when Holly got half the new, uh, Hyacinth Macaw, named, I think that one was Lady Macbeth, because the last one was Macbeth, and then it, and he died, I think, um, a little while before this. But you'll see that other uh, parrot in a bunch of the old, uh, like, Playboys, roller disco, and pajama party extraordinaire. If you look up, like, those videos, I think there's, like, four different versions of that on YouTube. It is so much fun. If you ever want to have a good time while you're just cleaning the house or whatever, put that on on the TV on YouTube in the background and just pretend like you're at a mansion party while you're also like vacuuming the floor. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> okay, this. I think I have actually shown this before, but I want to show it again anyway. A, I love this advertisement. I'm a sucker for ads. How much fun is that? Two, I love this bunny, this bobblehead bunny, just because she is a Playboy bunny and she is from the new Playboy club that had opened in Las Vegas. And also because she reminds me of Jasmine Fior because I am pretty sure that Jasmine Fior was working at the Playboy club for a little while dealing cards. And those bunnies, uh, you always see them wearing uh, the black suits. So that is just kind of cool and special and Holly wore a black suit when she was in that uh, fashion show which was just oh, oh my gosh so gorgeous <clears throat> so now we're gonna talk about the painted lady I think the original painted lady prolific pinup Michelle Angelo pays tribute to herself and Playboy 40 years ago this month, Playboy published the iconic pictorial Brush On Fashions, photographed by Mario Casilli. The images of body painted models foreshadowed a practice that would become a mansion tradition, and one in particular, psychedelic hippie, captured the spirit of the sexy 1960s as well as any we've seen. The model, a young lady by the name of Michelle Angelo, would go on to be the era's, one of the era's great pinups. Mario needed some girls for his shoot, so my agent sent me over, she recalls. When Mario saw me, he was overwhelmed and he really wanted to use me as playmate. The problem was, I was already coming out in other magazines. He tried to stop him from publishing me, but it was too late. He did tell me he would try to use me as much as he could. The painting was tempura, basically what a child might use for finger painting, she recalls. Mario himself painted me. He had a general idea of what he wanted, but sometimes he was just winging it. I am naturally very ticklish, and we had to stop sometimes because I was laughing so hard. Of Mario Castelli is also the photographer who worked with Dorothy Stratton, and they had a really good relationship. They seemed very friendly. Dorothy spoke really highly of Mario and seemed to feel uh, very confident and safe with him. 
So I just love these hilarious stories. Oh, and of how she's laughing so much. You watch those videos of um, Dorothy uh, filming her uh, playmate pictorials. And of course they're gonna pick, you know, the most flattering uh, shots, but she's always laughing and having the best time like a little girl playing dress up. I just, oh, it looked like so much fun. So sweet, and I, I do, I think I like uh, this Mario Caselli guy. Um, when you modeled back then, you never knew where your pictures were going to be published, he explained. The magazines would give you a different name every time and make up stories about you. Towards the end, I'd done so many magazines, a photographer started putting wigs on me, as if guys wouldn't recognize me from the rest of the body. In the ever-growing gallery, at Michelle Angelo 44 D, you can get better acquainted with Michelle's improbable 1968 physique. Hell, you can own it. She's selling a life-size fiberglass statue above of herself, hand-painted as if it was for her favorite shoot. Playboy was always the special one, she said. Cool. I also love those body form things. I almost did that one time, but then they didn't need any more models. But that was before I had my boobs done anyway, so <laughs> it wouldn't have been as good. <laughs> okay, this it just is a little picture that I had missed the first time I went through here, or else I would have pointed it out because way in the back there this young lady where whoop right there that is megan hauserman who was i think one of the cyber girls uh playmates on hand will be shannon james and lindsey wagner and the cyber girls will be jillian bayer jessica danielle amanda hanshaw megan hauserman jennifer hart and aubrey lemon very cool so I just happened to see her picture back there and I was like, oh, make a Oh my God. Very fun. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. Uh, the Playboy Advisor. On average, how long after insertion should intercourse last for the woman to be satisfied? TD from Syracuse, New York wants to know. Playboy answers, you'll have to find an average woman and ask her. Good luck. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. That's hilarious. That reminds me of, who was it? Oscar Wilde, I think. He was like, on trial or something and yeah he was like on trial and the the lawyer man dude prosecutor man says to him something like oh uh, mr wilde don't you think that the average man would find this book to be highly scandalous or something and oscar wilde uh, flips flippantly replies i have no knowledge of the average man <laughs> Uh, he went to jail for a very long time. For being gay, by the way, how dumb. It's because back in the day in England, it was a crime. And he got in trouble for being gay. Dumb. Aren't we glad that we live in the modern days? We are. Okay. <gasps> Ice teas, hot cocoa. Oh yes, I love her. I think she's the best. Okay. For hip hop's original gangster, she's the perfect partner in crime. And I also love, you know how um, Hollywood marriages, they tend not to last super long. And these guys, at the time of this publication, it was eight years. So they must have got married in 2000. I can do math. And now it's like, what, 23? So they're still married. 23 years in Hollywood and a beautiful child. Oh. Good for them. What a love story. I love them. Okay. As the most outrageous and improbable couple in hip hop saunters into Bluefin, an upscale restaurant in Midtown Manhattan, it's hard to say for certain which of the two gets more attention from the button down lunchtime crowd. Is it Ice-T, the pioneering rapper turned television cop, 
whose inconspicuous black knit cap and red sweatsuit can't disguise his intense gaze and trademark swagger, or do gazes lock onto his female companion, the fortuitously proportioned blonde, dripping with bling, his, bu his bullet-busted, bubble-butted wife known as Coco? For nearly eight years, the ultra-cool iced tea and his hot Coco have come as a package deal from the boardroom to the bedroom, the one-time street hustler who parlayed his gangster rap career into a starring role as Detective Oda Finn, Finn Tutuola on NBC's Law & Order Special Victims Unit is always accompanied by the distinctive body model whom Ice affectionately describes as a classic blonde with an abstract ass that's unbelievable, that's unbelievable as in it cannot be believed. <laughs> And although their controversial relationship may not always conform to the standards of the narrow-minded public, why are they scandalous? I don't know. I have to look this up. Coco is proud to say she has won over his fans by bringing stability and focus to Ice's life. Out of anyone in the game, he's going to be the craziest one to hold down, she says. It obviously takes a big person to do that, and Coco fits the bill. Born Nicole Austin, her moniker was given to her by a baby brother who couldn't quite pronounce the name Nicole. Oh, that's so cute. She met her husband-to-be on the set of an independent film. Now we are on page 139 to finish the article. Uh, that he was producing. He was in a bad mood that day, so Ice's friend sent Coco over to cheer him up. When I turned around, Ice recalled, believe it or not, she, the, the first thing I saw was her teeth. Then I seen her titties. <laughs> oh shit. My brain said, she's probably skinny. And brothers, we want a little meat on their bones. So she turned around and I'm like, oh, she's got an ass. <laughs> After collecting himself, Ice re reproached Coco. I think he's I think it's supposed to be approached. Ice approached Coco and asked her if she'd ever date a gangster rapper. I'm a white girl who listens to dance music, Coco said. I thought all rappers were the same. I said, well, if he's nice. Ice's response, take the nice off I take the N off nice and you got ice. God send me that line. Ever since the two have been inseparable. Coco accompanies Ice to his concerts and lectures while she has her own office on the SVU set while Ice helps her run her websites, cocosworld.com, myspace.com slash cocosworld 2006. He also gets the plum assignment of her, gets the plum assignment on her photo shoots. I call him my spritz boy, Coco explains. He oils me down to make me look all nice and wet. <laughs> The idea of my wife alone, naked, in a room full of horny men can be weird. It can weird a guy out, Ice replies. But if you're in there, it turns into a lot more fun. Okay, I don't want to read the whole article, but that is hysterical. I love his attitude. I love her attitude. I love their team. I love that they are still married and still going strong. I love their beautiful little girl. I don't think I'm ever going to have biological children of my own, but if I had one, I would want it to be a beautiful little girl. <laughs> Good for them. How delightful. Christina Aguilera, Candyman, one of Playboy's sexiest five top music videos of 2007. Christina adopts a classic pinup look in this sexy homage to swing. Can't decide between Aguilera as a blonde, brunette, or redhead? In the opening sequence, she performs each shade simultaneously, offering a side-by-side -side comparison. And her swing has zing. He's a one-stop shop, makes the panties drop. He's a one-stop shop, makes my cherry pop. <laughs> I love that song. I do burlesque, and so I love the... Um, uh, that one and the, uh, the, the Enter the Circus one and there's a couple other of those uh, Christina songs. What's that one that's the best one? Oh, the Nasty Naughty Boy. That one has that great trumpet in there. 
like super good. What do they call that? When they have the trumpet making that like really burlesque noise. I love that one. That was the best one. All right. All right, I don't know how to say this name because it's Norwegian, but I think it's Peter Hegri. We're just gonna, we're just gonna say that one. Okay, okay, but I don't know how to say it because although I am Scandinavian, I am not Scandinavian, I am an American. So I don't know how to say the words and names of my ancestors, alas. Norwegian photographer, Peter Hegri. Of the nude art site HegriArt.com shoots a lot of Ukrainians. No doubt Ukraine has the most beautiful girls in the world by far, he says. They have a special gene there. I must agree because I know a bunch of Ukrainian girls and Russian girls and a couple other uh, like Eastern Europeans, especially down here. And they, all of them that I know are especially good dancers. They're incredible and beautiful some of the most beautiful girls i've ever met in my entire life and that also goes for strippers i met a lot of girls polish ukrainian russians were the main uh ones who i met from uh coming from europe and they were just spectacularly phenomenally beautiful and i love these pinups too got a light <laughs> in this shirt by the way a moth has ate a hole in my shirt now i'm gonna have to get some kind of a patch some kind of like a rock and roll like a guitar a star maybe or something and put it over that moth hole in my life okay sorry this is miss march Whoop. sexy shop girl Playmate of the year, Sarah Jean Underwood wasn't shopping for talent when she walked into BB in Beverly Hills, but in 26-year-old sales specialist Ida, pronounced Ida, oh boy, I don't know how to say her last name, Longfist? Oh boy, we're just going to say Ida. Ida, she spotted a must-have item. Sarah and Ida got to chatting, and our ad hoc scout realized that this was more than just an exotic beauty with a flawless figure. As Sarah would later tell Holly Madison, Ida had the spark and flair of a playmate. Soon thereafter, the girls next door showed up unannounced at the clothing boutique, camera crew in tow. I was in total shock when they asked me to pose, Ida said. I'm kind of a thrill seeker. Throw me in, I'll sink or swim. Such fearlessness is hardly surprising in a woman who lived in more countries before the age of 18 than most people will ever visit. She was born in Tanzania to a Swedish father and a Tanzanian mother, and because of her father's work with UNICEF, grew up in Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, France, the UK, Sweden, and Denmark. Holy crap, girl. She speaks three languages, English, Swedish, and Swahili, and has a degree in fashion and marketing and plans to study economics among other subjects. Ida devotes a lot of time to charity work, a passion she inherited from Pops. I'm a really positive person, person, she says. My dad, he's like saving the world, so good luck to whoever decides to marry me. He'll have some big shoes to fill. I love Playboy because I get to meet people from all over the planet. How cool! She's the cool, cool, coolest sorry that thing was coming off and the beautifulest dang it Ooh, i love that sparks oh i love that one especially She is perfect. Wowzer. Okay, you ready? Oh. 
Anita. Ambitions, modeling, writing comedic short stories, learning a fourth language, and taking up golf. Turn on, laughter, and a great sense of humor. A guy who can disco and do the sprinkler dance. Turn offs, closed mindedness, negative attitudes, arrogance, and narcissism. Charities I have worked for UNICEF, Boys and Girls Club, and Mother Teresa's organization. Does that not have a name? Uh, uh, plans for continuing my education. I would like to complete a master's in communications. Favorite foods to make? Red velvet cake, lasagna, and pilau, an African rice dish. What I value most in the world? Freedom. Uh, yeah, go girl. <laughs> and the ability to live a life where your wildest dreams can come true. Welcome to America, girl. Right on. Gorgeous. Good for her. I love her. We need more of her. <laughs> That's the secret of our marriage. My wife and I love all the same things. <laughs> Oh great, that's one reason that me and my husband, we get along so well too. <laughs> okay, look at this, this is so cool. This is like a face progression of like the most masculine features to the most feminine, but it's like the same face, but just masculine to feminine. Isn't that crazy looking? So interesting to me. I don't know why that particularly caught my attention, but it did. What? What is this polygamist over here? Is one woman enough for any man? Oh, this must be the article. I didn't really read the whole thing, so you know, I skip here through here looking for interesting things. But being an ex-Mormon, whenever I see polygs, I always gotta pull up and see what's going down. All right, Playboy is 25, sexiest celebrities. I know what you are all here for. And its name is Holly, Bridget, and Kendra. Is it on there? Okay, perfect. Yay! Oh, and there's this little picture in the corner. I'll show you. Half like straight up looks like a kind of a a, a wax figure mannequin dude in that picture, though. <laughs> As we all learned from Saturday morning cartoons, three is a magic number. <laughs> when it comes to women, three beats two and triples one. More is, more is not less, more is merrier. The Greeks told of three graces, splendor, mirth, and good cheer, who threw all the best parties and ran the odd saucy errand for Aphrodite and Eros. Okay, that's hysterical. I didn't actually read through this whole thing. I kind of um, skimmed through really quick, but also so we can kind of react to things together as I'm reading it. And this is delightful because when I first started dating my now husband, uh, he gave me a nickname of, it was not this name, it was another name for the goddess of mirth. <laughs> he said I was the goddess of mirth. How delightful. <laughs> In Wagner's opera cycle, Der Ring des Neibenlugen, the three Rhine maidens, I'm not going to say their names, are sexy mermaids who nakedly guard the Rhine gold, the wonder stuff on which the plot hinges. And once upon a time, there were three little girls, Kelly Garrett, Sabrina Duncan, and Jill Monroe, who went to the police academy and were assigned hazardous duties, only to have it all taken away, only to be taken away from all that by a man. His name was Charlie. Yet all mythic temptress trios seem mere preludes to the girls next door. Holly, Bridget, and Kendra, apples of Hef's eye, and a sign that the terrorists aren't winning tiddly. Oh my gosh, this is such a this is such a time warp. This is their third sexiest celebrities appearance and their third Playboy cover. Studies show our rabbit is one of the world's most recognized logos, yet in just three years these ladies have put their stamp on our half-century heritage. Say you're a Playboy editor and men always ask whether you've been to the mansion. Women's reactions were less reliable. Until now, you work for Playboy? I love the girls next door, they tell us. Three cheers for the blonde, blonde, and the blonde. <laughs> I think he got a little jealous of them. 
Do you think so? I think that men frequently get very jealous of women. Uh, there's supposed to be that whole stupid thing about penis envy. I don't believe in it at all. I 100% believe in vagina envy though, because it is extremely easy for women to attract uh, sexual partners and sexual interests. If I wanted to go out tonight and get laid by four different people, I could do it. A man would have a much more difficult time uh, accomplishing that same task. And I think it drives some small, petty, bad, patriarchal type men, I'm not talking about all men, but it drives some men absolutely bonkers that we can command this sexual attention in the way that I think the majority of men deeply wish that they could. <laughs> men want to be sluts, but they just can't. So that's why they get mad at women who go around being sluts. <laughs> <laughs> this is my general opinion and for here it's the fame that Hugh Hefner wanted so badly to be seen as the commanding you know sexual force and also like the super famous one and the way that these girls stepped into that spotlight and people adored them um I think he was very jealous of that I don't think he was a total devil but I don't think he was a saint and even if I thought he was like the best I would still critique him because you know, if you watch my channel, you've got to critique your idols. you got to do it. <gasps> Look at Sarah Jean. I love her. Carmen Electra. I also love her. She's amazing. I have some of her workout videos. <gasps> Is she smoking a Wicked Siggy? I have not smoked any Wicked Siggies in a week and a half. I am making myself wait two weeks before I go and buy another pack. And hopefully I won't buy another pack, but I have to wait at least two weeks. <laughs> we'll see if I'm successful. I love her butt back then. Why did she get all the insane butt like jobs? I think she got a bunch of them taken out now though. She's looking good now. In my opinion, of course, it's her own opinion is the most important one. Let's do be serious. Have you guys ever seen Ben-Hur? Frankly, I don't like the looks of this new guy. <laughs> it's because they row to the beat of the guy who hits the drum, so. <laughs> I learned that from Ben Hur. Oh no, is that the last thing? Oh wait, no, there's a couple more things. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hey man, what's with the attitude lately? <laughs> he looks like a Mormon. <laughs> I've had a request, but instead I'm going to sing another song. <laughs> Okay, in my burlesque shows, um, I, I dance and I do striptease, but I also sing and I do striptease. A lot of performers, uh, I think it's so dumb to sing a song at a burlesque performance and just to sing and not to strip. I'm like, listen, your singing is not any more entertaining than my dancing and I'm getting naked at the end of it. So I figured I'm a decent singer. Why don't I just get naked while I'm singing and then people won't notice even if I fuck it up. Genius plan, right? So I started implementing that and it's a lot of fun. I really, really enjoy it. But when I see this lady here, I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly how I look when I'm up there singing my songs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> I wrote this song to make me rich and get laid. <laughs> Way to be honest, my man. Way to be honest. Oh, and now we are at the end. We are at Playmate News. I never claimed to be smart, just a smart ass. <laughs> Julie McCullough. Yeah, cool. Pop questions. Sarah Jean Underwood. Sorry, get that off my hand. 
that's gonna be a lovely part of the video. Sorry, everyone. What is it like to be Playmate of the Year? It's pretty hectic. I'll be at the airport at 5 a.m. and then work at an event all night, get a couple hours of sleep and fly somewhere else for another promotion. But I'm having a blast. Do you get lots of attention from fans? Yes, people recognize me everywhere I go, which I never expected. Even if I check into a hotel under a different name, people are still waiting there to meet me and get my autograph. At a club in Minneapolis, a girl was bawling because she was so happy to meet me. That reminds me of Miss Congeniality when they win the crown. <laughs> I love that movie so much. Do you ever get time for yourself? I'm so busy most of the time that when I get a day off, I don't know what to do with myself. I get stressed out thinking there's more work I should be doing, but I like to have time alone and relax and regroup. I work out or go shopping to clean my, clear my head, and it's nice to spend time with Hev and the girls at the Playmate house too. Still, I miss Oregon so much. Aww. Well, I know that nowadays, I think she lives in Oregon, um, in like this cute little cabin -y retreat action going on out in the woods, and she has these pictures out there with her boyfriend. She helps him to build the cabins, and they're kind of living out there like cottage core style. It's very, very cool. Well, thank you so much, friends and neighbors, for coming by for another Girls Next Door era Playboy review. I think next time we're actually, actually going to jump back into the 1960s. Uh, this one has Surrey Marsh in it, and I want to uh, feature this one really quick uh, before we get too far away from the girl in the centerfold, uh, which I just finished uh, reading and reviewing that book. And you can check out all those videos if you want. But this is the last magazine, uh, Playboy magazine that Surrey is in. So I want to, I want to feature that one really quick too. <laughs> and I love my, my vintage ones. I love Girls Next Door. I love it, love it. But there is something truly special about uh, 1960s era Playboys. Uh, they're just truly special and they really uh, sparked my passion for, uh, you know, sex sexual liberation and body positivity and just like embracing uh, female, I think I've said sexuality so many times that they're going to flag this video, but it's probably going to get uh, flagged anyway. <laughs> they usually don't um, like adult content them right away, but about a week after I post them, maybe somebody reported them. I don't know. That's okay. Because they are adult content anyway, so I don't get sore when they do that. All right. I will see you all next time, and in the meanwhile, don't do anything I wouldn't do.